Hello and welcome. My name is Kachmar and you're watching Geek Factor. Today I have the utmost pleasure to talk to you about a game called Death Road All Stars. Death Road is a racing game designed by Jacek Wuszczki and published by the Knights of Unity who helped sponsor this video for which I say thank you. Now this game is about a race. It's about a race in the demonic, well maybe not demonic, but not too friendly setting of the divided states of America. And yes, while winning by using your skill and talent to be the first to cross the finish line is an option, it's also an option to simply kill each and every single one of your opponents before anybody gets there. So whichever way you choose to play the game, it's entirely up to you. Let's begin with the setup. First thing you need to do is you need to put the game board in the middle of the playing area. Now, the board is actually two-sided, so first decide which side of the board you want to be playing on. For this gameplay, for this rules video, I decided to play on this side of the board. Now, take all of the vehicle boards and place them in a stack nearby. Then, take all of the vehicle cards and also separate them into decks corresponding to the appropriate vehicle boards. Now you can see the name of the vehicle right here on the cards. This is how you separate the vehicle decks. Somewhere nearby you can also place the driver board. Now take all the other cards, these are the weapon cards, and separate them for now into three decks. Now each card is usually associ associated with a specific part of the car. It's either in the front, in the middle, or in the back. And that's how you separate those decks. If you look closely, right here you will see a letter and a number. Now the letter stands for front, middle or back, so F, M and B. Ignore the numbers for now, but use the letters to separate those into three decks. Shuffle the skid cards and create a skid deck nearby. Take two of those closing lane templates, make sure you use the side up, the same side up that you're using for the game board and keep them nearby. Take the road event cards, shuffle them and then place five of them face down in a nearby row near the game board. If you're playing an advanced version, you can also use the one final stretch card used, picked at random. Now, all of the unused raced uh, road events cards and all, of, and all the unused final stretch cards, all of those go back into the box. They will not be used during this play. Now, if you're playing a two or three player game, you need to make the board a bit smaller. Now, if you look closely, you have six lanes divided by these lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, these two are so-called dirt lanes, while these four are so-called asphalt lanes. Now, if you're playing a two or three player game, you need to put one of those tiles exactly so that you can cover up one of those lanes. What I mean by that is this, as you can see, this will not match up perfectly, but the idea behind it is to simply make so that you only have five lanes instead of six. So you're gonna put it a bit like this. Now you have one, two, three, four, five lanes. You ignore everything that is here. Now take the, uh, the lane cards and only use as many lane cards as you have asphalt lanes on the game board. So for example, when I look at the board, I only have three asphalt lanes, right? Because it's one, two, three, four and five are dirt lanes, uh, dirt lanes, which means I only take the one, two and three cards. I put all the other cards back into the box. I shuffle those and I place them nearby. I can place them nearby the road event cards because they will usually come to play with those events. The three types of status tokens and the road event tokens, they are double-sided, you place them nearby. Now pick the first player. Let's say that the first player is uh, the last player who most, is the player who most recently ran out of fuel. Now, starting from the player and going in clockwise order, choose one of the available vehicles and take the corresponding vehicle board and the vehicle miniature. Use this side of the board up. This side of the board simply has the information what cards will go into its vehicle's deck, the deck that I showed you before. So, when you're playing and when you picked, you pick, you put this board this side up. You also take one of those three tokens. This is the gear token, this is the handling token, and this is the condition token. 
You also take these free condition, uh, free damage tokens, and this initiative marker that is simply corresponding to the type of vehicle you have, right? To the, you simply go by the illustration. Now, going from the last player and going again in counterclockwise order, every player picks a driver and places their driver board nearby their vehicle board. So now, going from the first player again, we all take those decks that I showed you, those weapon decks. Now, the first player picks one of, the, the, one of those decks and keeps it to themselves so he can choose. Then the other player picks another one of the remaining ones and so on and for, so forth. Now, in a two-player game, it's, uh, the, first play, the first player initially will, have, will pick two decks to choose from. In a four-player game, the last player will have no decks to choose from in the beginning. But what is happening exactly with those decks? So going from the first player in the deck or decks he has in front of them, he is looking through those decks and he is picking a weapon. Now he is picking a pair, because how exactly does that work? As I showed you, each of those cards has a designated letter and number. Now you can use, you know that letter is used for the simply telling us whether this weapon is from the back, middle or front. Now the number is supposed to help us find a pair. So for example, you're supposed to find B5 with another B5. So once a player picked a pair from their deck, they take the pair, they keep it face down for now, and then they move the, they give the deck to the next player on the left, and so on and so forth. So by the end of this process, each person will have three pairs of cards, three pairs of weapons. And on top of that, they will also have the specialized deck related to their specific car. All in all, you will have a deck of cards, mixed vehicle cards and weapon cards that you chose from. Make sure every player at the end of this procedure has six weapon cards, two from the, two from the front, two from the middle and two from the back. Now each player places those tokens. You place the gear token right here on number two. Then you place the condition token and the handling token on the maximum highest values you can on these two tracks. So 10 for condition, eight for handling. And then you take those three damage tokens. Now the way you pick them is you put the one with the one mark on the bottom, one of the two on top of that and one of the three on top of that. Now that stack you place simply right here on this board. Now, going from the first player in a clockwise order, each player places their initiative marker on the initiative track right here going from the front. Now, this is showing the actual initiative. Once you've done that, everybody now picks a first spot for their vehicle. Now, going from the player with the first initiative and down the initiative track, each player places their vehicle in one of the spots visible right here in this very quadrant. So in the end, it will look a little bit something like this. Each player can also take a turn order card with a little help here and put them near their vehicle board. Now everybody takes the deck that they created, the, the one they created by combining the vehicle cards and their own uh, and, and the weapon cards. They shuffle the deck and then from the deck, every player draws five cards to make up their starting hand. Now you don't technically have to physically keep them in your hand, but you do have to keep them secret from your opponents, right? So keep them face down in front of you, look at them whenever you want, or literally keep them in your hand. Now, every round goes the same way. It goes through a few, few phases, and then, after, and then after that, another round, another round begins, and then it just ends. Now, when, when does it end? There are two possible ways to win the game. If you get to a round where you have no more road event cards to resolve, then the player who is up, who is closest to the far away line, that's the line to the very front on the, of the board, is the winner. Or you're simply the only player left standing. All other players have been eliminated from the game, their vehicles have been destroyed, then you are the winner. So those two ways, you have, you have those two ways and those two ways only to win the game. Now, like I said, each round goes the same way. Each round begins with the initiative phase, where we establish which player is on which position on the initiative track. The important thing to know about the initiative phase is that you resolve the initiative phase during the very first round of the game as well. 
So even though you pick the initiative according to who was the first player and who was sitting next to him or her, uh, now you rearranged it to match how your vehicles are positioned against one another on the game board, because that's how you update the init initiative. So the first thing we see is we look which car is closer to the far ahead line. So that car will be first on the initiative track. So we already see that the car that has to be first is actually this one. And this will be the order in which actions will get resolved later on during the game. Now we take a look at the other cards. But what happens, what happens here? We have a tie. In case we have a tie when it comes to the position on the board, we then look at their gears. Now the person, now the, now the person that has the gear at a higher level gets to be in the front. So in this case, it's this vehicle that it has the higher level. It's on the on four. There, then we put them in the second spot on the initiative track. Now the person with the lower gear goes behind. I'm sorry, <laughs> goes behind them on the initiative track. Now there could potentially still be a tie, in which because they're both cars could be on the same level of uh, on the same gear level. So in that case, we would simply keep their relationship to one another, their positioning to, uh, against one another on the, on the, on the initiative, initiative track as it was. So for example, if that was the situation as we have it right now, okay, so this car is going in the front. Now we have those two. Now they are tied on the game board. They are also tied when it comes to gear level. So they are simply staying on the, initi on the initiative track as is. So this car is on the second spot and this car is on the third spot. So after we've done that, we've established the new initiative track, now let's move on to the reveal event phase. This is something that will let us see what is there awaiting for us in the future this round. Now the player on, which is first on the initiative track takes the leftmost face down event card and flips it face up to see what lies ahead. Now the important part is that this is the reveal event phase card. This is not the resolve event phase. Uh, this is the, after this, we will have the race phase during which the players, player, players will be taking many actions that will change the circumstances on the game board. And only after that will we have to resolve the actual event. So we only draw it and reveal it right now, just so you know what's coming up ahead. Now, sometimes the event will simply state what is happening. And other times you will be asked, to draw a corresponding lane card. Now, what, what does that mean? That means that the effects of this event card correspond to a specific lane on the game board. Now, we don't know which lane just yet. In order to determine that, we have to draw one of the lane cards. Now, this will tell us, for example, this is telling us number three. Now, the way we count that is we go from the top of the game board all the way to the bottom, counting only the asphalt lanes, not the dirt lanes, which are these one, these in this case, but the asphalt lane. So one, two, three. This means that something will happen right here. Now, a good idea is to mark that with one of those event tokens. Now, sometimes things that will happen here will be good. For example, this one. This means that any car that is on, the, on this lane, that finishes that round on this lane, will get to move forward, right? So that means that's a good thing. So in, in that case, we will simply, we could put this uh, event token green side up because it's a good thing. If this was something bad, as a reminder, it's a good idea to, keep it, to put it red, red side up so that we know that maybe we want to if, avoid that lane by the time we get to the resolve event phase. Now this card will go above the third event card. So if during this phase there is a uh, uh, there is a final stretch card above the event card which you are currently flipping up, so revealing, you will also reveal this final stretch card, assuming you are playing with uh, that card in the first place. Right, so now let's move on to the meat of the game, the race phase. This is the phase in which you will be playing actions to make sure you either move further along the track or do some damage to your opponents. The strategy is up to you. But first, when we get to the race phase, is basically the player phase. Now in the race phase, we perform it according to the 
uh, order established by the initiative track, so in the initiative phase, right? Going with the, from the player with number one initiative, going all the way down to the player with the smallest initiative. P player to players take turns. Now, the very first thing you have to do on your turn is see if you have any status tokens on your vehicle board and then you have to resolve them. This is the first thing you have to do. Various things in the game, both your actions and or your opponent's actions, will cause you to gain various status tokens. Now, if during this point, at this point during the game, if you have any tokens nearby, you have to resolve them, each and every single one of them, in any order that you choose. But you still have to resolve all of them. So, for example, let's begin with this one. How do you resolve the stun token? Now, it's quite simply simple. You lose one handling. So you'll have one less handling to spend during the game. And handling is the uh, currency in the game which you are using to pay for your action cards. Once you've done that, you discard this token. Now, however, you only lose this handling if you will take actions during this turn. If you do not, then no. But if you take any actions during this turn, you have to sp you lose this, uh, you have to lose one handling to get rid of this token. Another token that I'll show you is burn. In this case, you simply have to pick one card of your choosing from your hand, uh, from your hand and put it on the discard pile in front of you. Now, once you've done that, you discard this token. If, when you were supposed to discard this token, you had no cards in your hand, you simply ignore it, if ignore the effect, you're lucky this time. Now, with this card, however, with this, what you do is you pick one for each token you have for each veer token you have you take one card from the skid deck and you resolve its effect immediately now these effects are all represented represented by various icons right this wherever this icon will show up because i will also see those icons on the action cards themselves now wherever this icon shows up this basically means your car this is referring to your car this for example means moving the car one spot backwards this, for example, means one uh, damage that you will mark on the condition track, and so on and so forth. You have other effects here, but most, most of them are pretty self-explanatory. So, for example, this means you're losing two on the condition track. This means you're moving your card in the direction of the arrow. You see where the front of the card is, uh, car is, where the back of the car is, so you can find your way quite easily. See, moving to the other side, moving to the side, but you're also losing one uh, gear so you're going your gear level goes one a notch here similar situation and so on and so forth this is how you uh, resolve those skid cards once you've resolved one skid card per token you remove all of your tokens and you're now free and clear after you've done that you check because now it may turn out that you know you no longer have any handling right if you have handling, you will see in a second what you can do if you have some more handling. But if your handling is, on, is below one, then you have to perform what is called a skid. So now let's quickly go over what a skid is before we move on to the player actions. You resolve a skid every time your handling token is on the handling track below one. So this is also represented by this icon. So the moment your token reaches that icon or even further down, that means you're gonna have to resolve a skid. Now the skid is even more dangerous the higher your gear is. So how do we resolve this? Let's take a look. First what you do is you take a look at your gear level. Now you draw as many skid cards as you have your gear level. So for ex on your gear level. So for example, if my gear level was at three, I draw three skid cards. Now what I do is I take the leftmost card, flip it face up, and resolve it. If I have any more cards, I keep doing the same thing. I flip it face up and then I resolve it. Still, I have more cards to go, okay. I flip that up and then I resolve it. After you've resolved all of the skid cards that you had to take due to your gear level, you then take the status tokens that correspond to the icons from the point, from the spot where your handling token is and each to the left. So, for example, my token was right here on this spot. Now, this spot stands for, this icon stands for stun. This icon stands for burn and this for veer. 
So I take all of these three status tokens and place them on my game board to be resolved later on the same way I showed you before. Now after a skid you no longer take turns during the turn, this will be it, so usually you will resolve a skid at the end of your turn, so be careful. Now, you have to perform the skid only if your handling is below 1, right? If your handling is not below 1, you, st you can do other things. Now first of all you can always pass, now that means you can have your handling above 1 and you can still pass, you can say okay I don't want to do anything more this round, you remove, your, you remove your hand leak token from the board, you do not resolve anything else, you're done. Another thing you want to, you can do is you can focus. Focus means you take one card from your hand and you discard it onto your personal discard pile. So that way you're simply waiting. You're not doing anything, you're waiting to see what everybody else is doing. That can also be a viable option. Now I mentioned the discard uh, pile. This is what, something very important. When you play cards from your hand, you create a discard pile. You put them into your discard pile. Now if there is a moment in the game where you have to draw cards from your deck, but your, disc your, but your deck is empty, you then take your discard pile, you reshuffle it and create a new deck. Right, so during the race phase, during the player phase, we established every player on their turn begins to see if they have any status tokens. If they do, resolve them. Now if your handling is all over, and that's probably going to happen towards the end of the uh, round, of the, of the phase, if your handling is below 1, you have to perform a skid. Now if your handling is not below 1, you can either pass, you can focus, or you can play actions. Now how do you do that? On your turn, you can either perform a single action by playing a single card, perform a single driver action, or perform both. So you cannot play two driver actions, you cannot play two cards and play those, play those actions, no. One card, one driver action, or both. Now let's see what you can find, because those actions will usually resolve, uh, involve looking at some of the icons and resolving those effects. Now let look, let's look at some of those icons, what do they mean, what do they give us? How do we move uh, according to them, and how do we attack according to them? So first thing you need to know is that every time you play an action card, from your hand, you always pay the cost visible in the top left corner. Now you pay that cost in handling, which means you play the card, you place it down the phrase down in front of you, and then you move the handling marker down the track as many spots as the cost of the card that you just played. So for example, if I were to play this card, I would have to move it three spots down on the handling track. So it would now go to three. Now if during, because of that, I would have to move it below one, I would still do it the number of spaces required to do so. If I were to move it even further down, because that, that's how much handling I would have to spend, well, then we simply ignore the remaining points. But know that if there is no, if the, your handling token is below one, when you start your turn, you no longer take actions. You can no longer play action cards. You can only play action cards or use the driver actions when you have your handling above one. Now when you play your driver actions, you basically follow this, a similar logic, but you also discard the number of cards visible next to this small icon right here. Remember, every driver also has a, an ability that is in effect throughout the whole game, so please remember that. Now as far as the symbols on the driver board or symbols on the cards, those are very well explained in the rulebook. I will not go through each and every single symbol that you see on those cards, but I will try and give, give my, do my best to give you the overview of the most important ones, the most popular ones, in order so that you know what to expect. Now I also have these, uh, this small card, which is a cheat sheet, which, which will help you also throughout the game. Now, some of those icons are pretty self-explanatory, right? For example, you lose uh, one condition, you lose one handling, right? Uh, you can gain, uh, for example, a condition. Uh, your gears, for example, let me move it right here, your gears can either go you know, up or down, for example. Uh, you gain specific tokens when you perform certain actions. Now, the cards you play from your hand, those are basically divided into two types, the vehicle cards and the weapon cards. The vehicle cards are the ones we got at the beginning of the game corresponding to the specific vehicle that we got. The weapon cards are the ones we pick later on during the drafting when we were finishing the setup. Now, how do, how do the vehicle cards work? Well, whenever you play a vehicle card, you resolved the row that corresponds to the gear level on which you're currently on. So, for example, this car is currently at level 3 with their gears, which means we either resolve this row or this row. 
And remember, you have to resolve the role. Once you've decided to play the card, you, if you can resolve it, you have to resolve it. So for example, we have the movement icons, right? This icon means you have to move one space backwards. This means you have to move one space forward. This means you can move one space in any direction. So, for example, if, uh, but with this case, you see, you see the dash here, right? That means you pick either or. You pick one of those two and then you pick, you, then you do this one. So, for example, you do the same thing here. You pick one of those, then you move one or two space backwards or forward, and then you gain one uh, gear level up. Here you pick, for example, whether you want to move one space forward or one space backward, and then you, gear two, uh, then you gain two gear level ups. So that's how you perform, that's the icons. For example, these icons are also very important, very self-explanatory, but uh, the icon generally, blue icon, blue arrow, sorry, means direction, right? So for example, you can move right or left depending on what you choose. But if you see there is an, the, blue icon, the blue arrow is not by itself. There is the, an, another smaller red arrow right next to it. That means that if you were to move onto a space occupied by another car when performing this action, you would cancel that movement and instead you would bash in the car. It means you would inflict damage according to your statistics. I will remind you about that bashing in just a few moments. Now weapons. Weapons are a bit more interesting because here you inflict damage. Now what type of damage? This exact damage that you see right here but only to the cars that you've actually managed to hit. Now which cars do you hit? As you see, this small icon of a car corresponds to your location on the board, right? So imagine that this is actually your vehicle. Now, as you can see, this is one space in front of your vehicle. So if you are on the game board and there is a vehicle directly in front of you, you can use this card to hit that vehicle. And then if you hit that vehicle, you simply inf inf inflict this amount of damage. Now, sometimes you will see something like this. So basically what you have to understand is that the red crosshair is that the red crosshairs you see right here basically represents the maximal range of the attack and the number of those icons means how many targets you can hit this using this car. So if there is only one, I can hit one car and it has to be in exactly in this location. Now sometimes actually weapon cards will show you, like for example right here, a one red icon, but a number of all the other, of other icons that look just like this one, except they're a little bit grayed out. Well, not a little bit, actually quite a lot <laughs> grayed out. Now what that means is that this is still, you can still only hit one target because you have only one red icon, but it doesn't have to be exactly the one that is found on the space right here. You can actually pre pick any of the other spots that is covered by the grayed out uh, target icons. One, and once you've picked that, you can simply damage that car. But still, you can only hit as many cars, as many ve opponents' vehicles as you, have of the, as you have those red icons. This is very important. So, for example, let's say I was driving this card and I, was play and I would play this action card. I, play the, I pay the cost and now I want to hit, but there is no car directly in front of me, which means I would not hit anything. And this is the only spot that I can hit using this card. But let's say I was to play this action card. Now I have a whole bunch of possibilities ahead of me. But let's say I would have this card instead. And let's say the placement of the vehicles would be like so. So I could actually hit both of these cards because while none of this car, uh, these vehicles is actually on this spot corresponding to my location, both of these are right here on the grayed out ones. So they both can be my mark. They both can be my target. But as I said, I only have one red icon here, so I can still hit only one car. So I pick which one of these I want to hit, and then I infli inflict this amount of damage. Sometimes you will see this, which is basically the line of fire. It means that you can hit any one vehicle on this line of fire that you see right here. But still, only the amount of vehicles, as many you have of those red icons. So for example, I could hit this car with this car, because he is exactly on the line of fire. So this is like the maximal range of the attack. Sometimes you will have really powerful weapon cards, for example, like this one. So you, here you have three rows, three lines of fire that you can inflict damage on. And still, on each of those lines, you can only pick one because you only have one on each line, right? 
So these are not spread, uh, spread out like, uh, for example, we saw on this card. No, these three possible items still have to be in a single row as minimal as you know the maximum spaces like four spaces away from my car in each of those columns right now sometimes you will see a situation where for example you will have three rows like this and two rows will look exactly like it, like this, these two for example but the third one will be grayed out both the target icon and then the uh, line of, of fire icons will be grayed out which will again be which will again be supposed to represent your choice like for example if one of those would be grayed out you could hit only two targets but you can pick those two targets from the three you have luckily in this case for example i have all three in full color which means i can hit three targets with this weapon card now you know the basics this is the very important stuff the most important stuff you already know how to you know read those symbols and read those icons uh, now, you may be asking yourself, because, okay, you see how you move, you see how you attack, but what, what exactly happens, for example, if I drive into a wall? Or what exactly happens if I drive into somebody else? Let's talk about those things now, but let's begin with the damage. What it means when you take damage that you then uh, show on your condition track. Let's talk about taking damage first. So every time you take damage, usually you are shown how much damage you have to take. And that will be represented by something like this. And this will mean you will have to lose a certain point on the condition track. Now, every time you, your marker drops below one, you have to flip the top damage token that you have, have right here and immediately gain the bon bonus printed on the other side. After you've done that, the marker returns to the, ten, to the right, uh, leftmost spot on the track. Now, if it were to happen again, we would lose another, another token, gain another bonus, and so on and so forth. Now, if you were to drop below one and you have no more damage tokens here, your vehicle gets destroyed, you take no more actions during this game, you're out of the game for good, unfortunately. Sometimes your movement will result in ending on the same spot as another vehicle. That's what we call a bash. Now, if that, if that was to happen, you cancel that additional movement, which would actually cause you to physically uh, uh, put your vehicle on the spot of another vehicle. Instead, you deal damage. Now, what type of damage? The type of damage you see on your vehicle board right here. So because this vehicle bashed into this one, this vehicle is giving this damage to this vehicle. The bash is a result of movement, always. Now, sometimes the card will show these arrows next to the movement arrow. So if a movement with these arrows on the side caused you to bash, so for example, I played this card and I moved my, and I was my, with my car vehicle right here and I wanted to move it, I canceled the movement, I bashed into this car, I resolved the, this damage right here and then these arrows show me what I have to do with the car, car I just bashed into, right? Now, because I have two arrows to choose from, I can move, I, I can decide whether I want to move it left or right. But this is actually, this is what those small arrow, uh, arrows mean. Like if there is no car in sight, you can simply use this arrow to move. But the small arrows say that if due to that movement, we bashed into another vehicle, we can move that vehicle in any of the directions shown by the small arrows, but only one, pick only one direction and then move that corresponding vehicle. Now, if you were to ever move beyond the so-called far ahead line, do not move any further, ignore the other points. Instead, take every car that is not on your lane, because the cars in your lane who are behind you are basically in your aerodynamic tunnel. Sorry for the bad pronunciation there. So take every car that is not on the same lane as you and move it instead one step back, one spot backwards. So this actually corresponds to the way you have to look at the track. You, don't, you can't really see it as the finish line because there is no really f real finish line on the game board. The game board move, your movement on the racetrack is representing by your cars moving around the game board, but it's actually more like a drone that is following you around. So you're always looking, though these cars are always in motion. Right? Imagine it like in those old school video games where the, you had lo your car on the screen but the car was actually standing still. Instead the movement was represented by the board moving, by the road moving behind the vehicle, behind the small figure, right? So this is exactly what is going on here. 
Now, if you were to move backwards and you would have to go from behind the behind line, you ignore that movement and instead you take the damage shown on the spot where you would move. Now, if you once you've resolved that you can put that car on any spot near the be far behind line, that was the far ahead line, this is the far behind line. If this happened during a skid, you can discard the rest of the skid cards. If your car was to move into one of those barriers, then instead you cancel that movement and deal damage, this, the, type, the exact type of damage you see right here. So for example, if the car was to move here, he would stop here and then would gain two, uh, would lose two handling and lose two condition. Now, the dirt lane. The dirt lane is quite complicated and you have to be very careful. If after your action you end up on the dirt lane, then you have to move back your vehicle one spot. This is exactly reminded by the same icon you see on the action cards. And after every single player has, this, has, has their handling below one, performed a skid, resolved a skid, the race phase begins. And then we move on to the next phase, which is the resolve the road event phase. This is basically just to resolve the event that you saw before in the reveal event phase. Now you resolve it, you act accordingly to what it says on the card. After that is done, you move on to the preparation phase, which is when you prepare for the next round. Let's see what you do when, when I mean, what I mean when I say prepare for the next round. Now at this point, all of you should have your handling token beside your vehicle board. Now, you begin the preparation phase by simply putting your handling token back on the leftmost spot on the handling track on your vehicle board. Then you gain cards. You draw cards back up to five cards so that you have five cards on your hand. Now, if, you've already, if you already had cards in your hand, you, can, you could discard. You can disc if at this point you still have cards in your hand, you can discard as many cards on you and, as you like and then draw back up to five. And that pretty much is it. Remember, if you're the last person standing, if every other opponent has their vehicle de destroyed and is eliminated from the game, or if you're, going, if you're done with the initiative phase and you see that every event card has been flipped face up and you're the one up front, you're the winner. It's as simple as that. Now, right now you have all the information you need to play Death Roads. If you have any questions, however, please do not hesitate to put them in the comments below. Uh, either me or somebody from the Knights of Unity will gladly help you as soon as we get a chance. Now, the, uh, the Kickstarter kicks off, pun intended, uh, July 15th and will go on until July 27th. I don't know when this video exactly is going to be up, but once the Kickstarter link is there, I will put the link to the Kickstarter... Uh, well, well, once the Kickstarter is live, I will put the link to the Kickstarter campaign in the description below. Now, I've gone over most of this stuff. Like, I've gone over, over uh, the most important symbols that you can find. All the other symbols you have on those player aids, you, you will have... This is just a, this is a very prototype instruction, right? Uh, it's very important that you know this. So the final uh, rule book will, will look slightly different or even vastly different. It, there will have, it, they, it will have more detailed examples, for example, on how you perform certain stuff. So I did go over most of the stuff that you need to know how the game works. Uh, and, but more to come. And again, ask questions, do not hesitate. Also, please remember, this is again a prototype. So the final look of the game may be a bit different. But again, if you want more information, information about that, about what will look differently and how, uh, again, comment section, please. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, thank you to Knights of Unity for sponsoring this uh, video and letting me play this uh, prototype before the Kickstarter campaign started. I wish you guys good luck. And uh, to all of you watching, thank you so much. And I hope I get to see you soon. Bye-bye.